Hey there, Wargamers, Austin here with Death Ray Designs, and today we're gonna to talk about some of our brand new Death Mask stencils. These are flexible, transparent, adhesive stencils, and uh, the thing we're gonna focus on today is the fact that they are transparent. Now, that in and of itself, while it looks cool, um, isn't necessarily the, the fun feature. It is that you can place them more precisely on top of models and other places that you've already marked with stencils previously so that you can line things up really precisely, exactly the way you want to every time. On these examples down here, we've got a couple of fleur de -lis from our War Priory set um, that we have placed onto a base topper uh, from the uh, ship hull line and a little mock-up that we did uh, just for test purposes of the top of a rhino hatch. So um, these are uh, a couple of, this is a really simple technique, just put the stencil down and spray, and this one has a couple more steps. We're gonna add uh, one more step to this and do uh, some cool airbrush non-metallic metal techniques uh, on another one of these uh, rhino top hatch um, silhouettes um, and show you how we did all this. Might be hard to tell on camera here, but this is the uh, heraldry builder sheet that comes with all of the icon sets. Uh, if I can get the shine to happen there. Okay, actually that doesn't really matter. We're just gonna peel off the piece we need here. Um, we're gonna start off with one of the larger circles here. Doot, doot, doot. Okay, we're gonna place it onto our wax worksheet. These come in all the sets. Um, and we've also got the slightly smaller circle right there next to it. Whoop. Let go. And these two are going to stack up to make the, the uh, outside border and the inside field here. So I've, I've actually already gotten one of the, uh, the laurels prepped over here on this sheet. So let's just, let's just move it on over here. This one is off of one of the War Priory sheets. And we might as well go ahead and grab ourselves a little fleur-de-lis. Okay. So, uh, you might also notice that some of those pieces are stuck in the stencil. Um, the process of removing all the pieces you don't want still in the stencil is called weeding. So, um, we're going to weed those out really fast. There's a couple of different ways that you can do it. One is just with a pick tool or a knife or what have you, and you just sort of get up under the, uh, the edge of the piece you're trying to remove and pick it out. If you're only needing to pick out like one or two little pieces, not a big deal. Um, but if you've got a whole bunch of them you need to do, one of the easy ways to handle that is just a little piece of tape. Just get some masking tape and uh, just be careful how much pressure you're applying or how much you're sort of yanking at the pieces there. But there we go. Fold it right out. No need for any knives or pokey bits. Okay, so these are the stencils we're gonna be using for this particular piece. And the first thing that we're gonna do is um, do a little bit of a transition on this so it's not just solid black. So our first color that we're gonna load up is uh, base gray from Minotaur. Pretty much any medium gray will do for this, so um, there's no need to necessarily color match exactly. If you've got other Minotaur colors or other airbrush colors, totally fine. So we don't want a ton of gray on here. We just want a real simple, simple, simple transition. If you overstep where you want to go, you can always come back in with black and fade up from the bottom until you get exactly the shade you want. All right, so our first stencil that we're going to be using is the large circle. Now, if I peel this off, sometimes I find it a little difficult because this is, uh, it's, I kind of end up with it kind of like a big old Pringle chip this way, trying to get it placed exactly uh, because it doesn't lay flat uh, when you're holding it by the corners. Um, it can be a little bit challenging. So one thing that we have started doing that I think is an excellent technique for this is taking uh, just a little piece of masking tape. I like using the, the quarter inch tape for a lot of this, but on bigger stencils like this, you can use whatever size tape works for you. Um, I just like it not to get in the way any more than it has to. So we're gonna press this right down on top of our wax worksheet 
And we're gonna start peeling up one of the corners of the stencil just to make sure it all comes off together. And there we go. Now with this on here, we've got these two essentially little handles um, that we can use to help us position this. And because a lot of my sort of registration points of like where where is the center are right there through the middle, I'm gonna actually turn this sideways because it doesn't matter on this one. So now I'm just going to actually we can register on those little boxes in the corners here. Just want to make sure that the edges of the circle and the edges of the panel are even. Since it's so close, I don't want those to be uneven. So it'll be very obvious if it is. Okay, so now we have successfully placed it where we want it. Um, you can see here we've got just a tiny little bit of extra space on the outside edges. And now we're gonna come back in at a fairly sharp angle, peel that away, and we have it correctly placed. Also, as a side note, if you're using one of these stencils on uh, a surface that it does not completely cover, as you can see, we have a little bit at the top and bottom, um, it's probably best. Even if you're, you're airbrushing really precisely, just a little bit of overspray can, uh, can make you not have a very fun time. So let's get that all covered up. Now we will begin the airbrushing. So we're just putting down a little bit at a time. We want this to be really bright white, but you don't want to do it all at once or it'll get really flooded and gross. And depending on how high the pressure on your airbrush is, it could push some of that liquid paint underneath the mask if uh, you've got um, really high pressure going on. I think that is about as uh, super, super bright white as we can get there. Um, what I do think we should do is a little bit of shadow underneath just to, to make it not look quite so flat. So I'm gonna get just a touch of off-white going on on that underside. So I have selected Ancient Bone as my off-white color. It's just a real light cream color. Um, it's not meant to be real in your face. It just gives it a subtle little extra something going on. So we're just gonna Basically put a little arc of it right at the bottom. And it's really hard to see on camera, but there's a very subtle shadow under there. Now it is time to remove our stencil. Okay. Nice and crisp and clean. So next, um, we're gonna do it all again. As soon as we're completely satisfied that this is dry, um, which you may wanna use the old trusty hairdryer, you can move on to the next stencil, but for just a second, we're gonna hit this. So we're gonna use the same technique as before to place this stencil. There that, get up off the sheet with our tape. Now. Whoop. So we're just going to move this around until we are satisfied that our spacing is even. And I think we're on target there. I'm just gonna lightly tap that down and just do a double check. Sometimes if it's hovering above, it can look like it's in the right place uh, before it gets placed. But I think that that is dead center on there. So let's just peel that back, make sure we're tamped down all the way around the edge. We'll use our placement tape to cover up the top and bottom on here. And now it's time to do the background field. So we've done red before as evidenced by our previous examples. Um, we're gonna do something a little bit more regal this time. We're gonna use some purple. 
Uh, we're going to start off with the highlight um, just because it's easier to put down a light color and then cover it up with the dark as opposed to the other way around. Uh, and this one we're using Minotaur Demon Skin. That's a really nice light sort of lilac color. I guess it's a little darker than lilac. Mostly we're going to be focusing right on this top edge and we'll just sort of fade down over everything here. So we are using another Minotaur color for the dark purple. This is Ekimos, which is a fairly deep purple here. So there we are with this comparison. We're going to try to leave that top edge relatively alone. Just want to give a little bit of shine up there. There we go. And if you go over more of the highlight than you intend to, you can always come back with the, uh, the first highlight color um, and just try to touch it up. But for our purposes, I think that's pretty good. I might take a little bit more of a bite out of that highlight. Yeah, I think that I think that's that's solid there. I just want to make sure we've got a nice uh, dark background for our icon to sit on. All right, peel this off and see how we did. All right, looks great. So we'll stick this back over on our sheet. Save that for later. Um, and make sure we're dry before we move to the next step. So the next thing we're going to do is this laurel. Uh, the laurel is going to sit on top of this, uh, this purple ring here. And one of the added benefits here is that we can on the worksheet sort of line this stuff up and just test and see how things are going to, to look in place and make sure the spacing is correct before we even peel the stencils off. Um, they, you can't really see through the backer of what the, the stencils come on, but the worksheet um, is the perfect place uh, to, to make decisions and figure out what you're going to do next. Okay, so we're going to use our same placement trick on this. I'm make sure I get my, my thin tape here. Okay. All right, now it is time to place. Okay, we want to make absolutely sure that this is straight up and down and that we've got even spacing all around it. Okay. If there are parts that are obscured by the tape right now, you want to check and make sure after you peel it off that you're still happy with the placement and that's where you actually want to put the paint. And I think that we're, we're good. We've got it nice and level and centered up. So we're going to do a little bit of a non-metallic gold sort of technique here. Um, we're going to start off putting white down just to sort of level the playing field um, and get us back to a place where we can uh, we can actually apply some of these nice bright colors. And as always, we're gonna take it nice and slow and not forget to mask off for overspray. Naughty, naughty. That was almost bad. Just slow and steady. So we've got our first coat of white down, or that's many coats, but our first color is white and it is done. One of the simplest non-metallic metal sort of techniques that you can do is just the uh, parallel shine lines, which is really easy to do with, um, with an airbrush uh, and a right uh, array of colors here. So um, I've got uh, three colors. They don't have to be these exact ones here. I've got a really bright yellow. I've got sort of a, a mustardy yellow and I've got uh, a dark brown. It doesn't really matter on brand, um, but uh, just pick something that's gonna get you those effects. We're gonna try to leave um, the areas that are gonna be white alone for the moment. Um, and I'm thinking that if we wanted to, we can kind of plan out, maybe we want a, uh, a real sort of bright hot spot line, like going diagonally that way, and then maybe one right down there at the bottom. So, we want to leave that area and that area alone, which means that we want to come back in with a bright yellow next to it to accentuate the white. So we're starting off with irradiated yellow and we're going to try to get under our sort of imaginary white line right now. So I'm just going to come in there 
You don't want to go any further up than that. Then we're going to kind of cut through the middle here. Okay. And we'll come in on the top side there. So we've, we've kind of created these stripes. Um, and granted, the white areas that we've left alone are a little on the wide side right now. We're gonna come back in and tighten that area up. So we've essentially got our, our white lines going there and right through that little branch there. Um, we're gonna switch over to our, uh, what is this, mustard gas, uh, yellow. And we're gonna come in on the opposite side of where the white is and throw a little bit of this deeper yellow just at the edge to, to start fading that in. Okay, and up here at the top edge. Okay. Just bring that in just a little tiny bit there. Now we're going to do just a little bit more shadowing with, what color is this? Uh, Dubai? <laughs> Dubai brown? So with this, we're, we're gonna take a very light touch approach. So we're just gonna edge in ever so slightly there. Maybe just, uh, if I can get it to go, just a tiny little, Shaded points right there on that outside edge. Okay. I know that feels like a lot of it right down in the corner, but most of that's on the stencil and not actually on the painted area. Um, so I also like to, to point out that once we put this down, it's a little hard to see, but the edges of the floor are gonna be kind of close to the, um, to the edges of the laurel. Um, so I'm going to shade just a little on the inside of the, uh, the laurel in the hopes that it creates a little bit of a shadow effect. Okay. So nothing too big, just a little bit there and there. I think I'm also going to come back in with the white and brighten up those lines just a little bit just to make sure that uh, we get that nice high shine effect. Come back in to touch up a few of the super bright highlights here. Okay, all right, now, I know this looks like the most epic hot mess right now, but hopefully we're about to peel this off and it look good. So let's get that all peeled off. There we go. Put that back on our sheet for later. And I guess we are on to the next thing. I've sort of worn out the sticky on the back of this, so let's retack that down. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, all right. As with previous stencils, we're just going to lift it up with a bit of tape and start to place it. Okay, so we're just gotta make sure that everything's all on the center line and that our spacing is even between the laurels and the uh, the fleur-de-lis. Okay, so, so with stencils with a really sort of fine filigree here, you wanna be careful as you are taking the tape off. Just go slow, and there we are. Okay, so let's take a closer look at where everything is set. And I think that we look mostly fine, but I can tell down here at the bottom that the bottom point of the floor is not quite lined up with the middle of our laurel. So I am going to pull that back off and we're gonna just reposition that real quick. So 
Let's put the tape back down. I'm going to come over here towards the edge of this. I'm just going to pick that up real fast. And let's give that one more go here. So I think we're lined up at the top here. So I'm gonna kinda take a peek under here this time. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, that looks much better to me. Okay, so we've got our placement now and uh, we have an area around the perimeter that needs to be masked off as well. So let's just grab a little bit of our masking tape get that all taken care of. Okay, so we're gonna start off with white again for our floor, and we're gonna have it sort of match the, the outside um, border, where we've got the, the bright white and then kind of a cream color uh, fade. <clears throat> As usual, several thin coats do a lot better than one thick one. And uh, next, uh, we're gonna go back over to our Ancient Bone uh, Minus Hair Color and do a little bit of a shade. Got our Ancient Bone loaded up and we're just gonna put a little tiny touch of that at the bottom here. Okay, and then we're gonna do one really simple technique that I think really helps this pop, and that is a middle dividing line. So let's, uh, let's find ourselves a little straight edge here. Um, we could even just use the back side of one of the stencil sheets here. And that'll work just fine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay it right there, point to point on this. Make sure that we get it held down firmly. And I'm just gonna spray a little bit of this ancient bone. There we go. So it's a subtle effect, but it kind of makes it look a little bit more 3D. You get this uh, this cool little line right down the middle, um, but it still stays pretty pretty bright. Now, if we wanted to, we could come back in with the white and kind of hit the tops of the, the arms on the floor real quick. And I think I'm gonna do that just to give us a little pop of brightness right there at the top since we've kind of run all over it with that ancient bone. Um, I think that'll be really helpful for the effect. I'm gonna start working like on the stencil and kind of move on to the work piece. All right, so let's, uh, let's unwrap our Christmas presents here. There we go. Back on the sheet. All right. So I think that looks pretty excellent. So we've got one hatch done right now, but I'm betting that you've got more than one uh, in your entire army. Um, so let's take a look at the stencils and what state they're in. Now, while our sets do come with multiples of pretty much everything, these should be reusable at least a few times before they're all worn out. Now we've got paint all over these right now, so they're opaque and you probably need that very precise placement ability. So you wanna get them back to transparent again. So we need to get the paint off of there. We don't really recommend using a solvent like alcohol to wipe them off because it tends to make the adhesive gummy, but um, the, uh, the paint can just be scraped off. On some stencils with some paint, um, you can do it by putting down tape and peeling it back off and it, it works fine. 
Um, but just about everybody's got some kind of rewards card or credit card or something in their pocket. So um, you can just use that to scrape off most of this paint fairly easily. You wanna make sure to be careful and not snag on details and tear them. So you may end up having to come at it from a couple of different angles to make sure that you aren't destroying anything. Okay, so we got it off all the key details there and now pretty much set all the way back to good. Well, thank you guys for joining us in this video. I hope that you enjoyed it, had some fun, uh, maybe learned a few things about uh, painting and especially about layering our stencils to get some cool new effects. Um, you can use them uh, just as a simple application or layer them up like we did today for some really, truly interesting uh, ways to paint your models. Um, hope that you also uh, take into consideration the cleaning stuff that we talked about at the end. It'll really help make your stencils go longer and uh, stretch the dollar there. So uh, thank you again. Uh, definitely check them out on uh, deathraydesigns.com. There's these and tons more stencils. So there's probably something for whatever project you're working on. And if there's not something there that you want right now, definitely hit us up in the comments or send us an email and let us know what you're looking for. We can do custom stuff. And if your suggestion is good, it might just end up in the store. So thank you again. And until next time, Happy Wargaming. Oh no. No, no, no. Hmm. Well, Time to start over.